realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. Hi, I'm Nina Taylor, and here is your Gospel News. Gospel and praise and worship singer Lee Andrea Johnson. Her journey to her recording career almost ran like a plot for a made-for-TV movie. She overcame obstacles, hardships, and personal disasters to get there. Born January 23, 1983, Johnson, twice divorced, single mother of three children, when she fell on hard times, losing her home to foreclosure the day before a friend convinced her to drive to New Orleans in a borrowed car to audition for the TV show Sunday Best. 
The daughter of a preacher, Johnson had been singing in front of her father's congregation since the age of two. She never really considered a professional singing career as a gospel artist. She arrived at the TV audition with little time to spare and wearing flip-flops and the clothes that she drove there in. She was amazed to be selected as a contestant. Johnson ended up being declared the winner at the end of the show's third season in 2010. A placing that not only came with the gift of a brand new car and a cash prize, but also, in time, a recording deal. Her debut CD, The Awakening of Leandria Johnson, was released in 2011, followed by her second EP, The Evolution of Leandria Johnson. That was in 2012. The two EPs then were combined together to make one full album, The Awakening of Leandria Johnson Deluxe. A second full-length album, Live, The Experience, which also came out in 2012. Then during 2015, she appeared on the Oxygen reality show, The Preachers of Atlanta, a spinoff from the hit TV show, Preachers of L.A. She returned with her second album, Bigger Than Me, two years later. Before the age of 22, Jasmine Murray. She was a finalist on American Idol. She won the Miss Mississippi title, and she placed in the top 10 of the Miss America pageant. She has been on countless TV shows. She's best known for her powerhouse vocals as a finalist in season 8 of American Idol. Jasmine has worked hard to overcome and achieve so much at such a young age. After winning the Miss Mississippi and placing in the top 10 of Miss America in 2015, she paid for her college tuition entirely with her contestant earnings. Now she's inspiring audiences all over the world with a profound message of hope as an artist and songwriter. Now at the age of 25, Jasmine's experiences contribute to the wisdom and poise that she now carries. She's on a mission and she says she's just getting started. Darlene McCoy, singer, songwriter, author, minister, and radio personality, is back and reminding us why we fell in love with her ministry when she was introduced to the industry back in 2007. With her self-titled CD back in 2007, she was a two-time Dove nominee award for Best Urban Album and Best Urban Single. She landed her hit single, Falling in Love, on the soundtrack of Tyler Perry's first movie, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Darlene McCoy is currently making her way up the Billboard Gospel Music Charts. Here's your Billboard Top 10 Songs in the Country. Number 10, B.B. Winans with He Promised Me. Number 9, Brian Courtney Wilson, A Great Work. Number 8, Tasha Cobb Leonard featuring Nicki Minaj with I'm Getting Ready. Number seven, Ja'Kalen Carr, You Will Win. Number six, Jonathan McReynolds, Not Lucky, I'm Loved. Number five, J.J. Harrison and Youthful Praise, No Reason to Fear. Number four, Pamela Mann featuring Timberland with Through It All. Number three, Jermaine Dolly, Serve. Number two, Todd Delaney, Down from Number One from Last Week with Your Great Name. And number one, once again, this makes eight weeks. Corinne Hawthorne with Won't He Do It. Well, that's your Billboard Top 10 Gospel Songs in the Country and your Gospel News. Remember, we'd love to hear from you about all the great music and events in your great city. You can email us at thegospelnewswithnina at gmail.com. I'm Nina Taylor. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. Hello, I'm Nina Taylor, your gospel news reporter, and you're listening to The Pastor's Corner with my friend, Elder Ernest Richard, on Elation Radio. Well, God bless you. God bless you. Thank God for Nina Taylor. You can catch her right here on Elation Radio. Amen. Thank God for each and every one of you. Apparently, I am not Elder Ernest Richard. I am Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow. I am the co-host of the Pastor's Corner, and I want to welcome you tonight to our time together. Uh, 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 Elder Ernest Richard is uh, not with us tonight, and so, of course, I'm standing in 
to do what I have to do. Thank God for our producer, uh, the wonderful, the lovely Kimmy Kim. Kimmy Kim, how you doing tonight? You there or you left me hanging? Oh, Lord. Kimmy Kim, you can't leave me hanging. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Well, to God be the glory. We thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for, amen, this opportunity to join you and to share with you. Amen. I believe that the Lord wants to share some things with you to encourage you, to strengthen you, to keep you going forward in your walk with him. So, again, we thank God for you. We want to go in prayer, and then we want to talk for a little bit uh, tonight with uh, you concerning some of the things that the Lord has shared. We do invite you to call into the pastor's corner. Uh, we do invite you pastors to call in. Certainly, uh, the number is listed on our Facebook page, The Pastor's Corner. And if I could remember it off the top of my head, I would tell you. But because I don't remember it, I'm not going to tell no story. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. I just press a button and I die. And nevertheless, let's go before the Lord. Let's pray. And certainly, we will go from there. Our Father and our God, we just thank you for an opportunity to come together again, oh God, as on this radio broadcast, the Pastor's Corner with Relations Radio and iHeart Radio and Oh, God, and all of the other uh, opportunities that we have to share. Oh, God, we thank you that you would allow us this opportunity. We pray that someone would hear your word, someone would be strengthened, comfort, and challenged and changed, convicted and converted by your word. Lord, let answers come. Let direction come. Let instruction come. Let reproof and correction come because you are God. We pray that you would do the supernatural and let your will be done even now in the name of Jesus. We are thanking you in advance, Lord, for the changes that's about to take place in the name of Jesus. We are looking forward to what you're going to do, Lord, so we surrender to you in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would just speak to us. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God. Oh God, that you're going to do the supernatural. Hey, God, we thank you. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Somebody right now is discouraged. God, we need you. We need you, God, right now. Show up, Lord, and show yourself strong. Where are you, Lord? Show up, God. Somebody's waiting on you. Somebody's waiting on you, God, and we're trusting you that you're going to do it in the name of Jesus. We praise you and give you glory. Thank you again for this time that we may be together, O oh God. We praise you and we glorify you for what you're going to manifest. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, listen. Last week. Last week on the show, we began uh, sharing from a thought out of Psalm 27, which reads, saying these words in verse uh, 13 and 14, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And we talked about the importance of waiting, the importance of waiting. And we talked about how one of the biggest issues in waiting is impatience. And we defined impatience as irritation with anything that causes delay. This has been an issue for many of us. When we don't see things happen in a certain amount of time, we get irritated, we get agitated, and all of a sudden we uh, start making moves and making decisions that are unbeneficial, and it creates greater issues than when we started. We discovered that impatience leads to impotence which is basically a lack of control or power. 
meaning that you're unable to accomplish, because you're unable to accomplish something is due to your weakness because you're so irritated by things being delayed. So you can't do what you're supposed to do because you're impatient and it causes you to be impotent, okay? And impotence leads to infirmity, which is weakness. It is weakness. It is uh, uh, feebleness and frailty. It is malady, which comes from the enemy. The enemy causes maladies, especially mental maladies. And so, therefore, you're too weak to understand the importance of waiting. And we talked last week about how change doesn't come without waiting. And for scriptural reference, we went to John, uh, rather Job 14 and 12, and it says all my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. So your change will not come unless you learn how to wait. You must understand that when you wait, that's how God has an opportunity to operate. Um, even last week, uh, Elder Richard talked about how Daniel had prayed three times a day for uh, a number of days and how his answer was delayed. The Bible says that he, uh, the angel was held up by the prince of Persia for, I believe, uh, 20 and one days. Uh, that is 21 days, okay, that he had to wait for his answer. Now, some of you are saying, well, 21 days is a long time. But there are people who've been waiting longer than 21 days. There are people who've been waiting for some years for some answers because they have understood the importance of waiting. And I need you to get this. If you don't get the importance of waiting, then it doesn't make sense why you have to wait. We talk. One of the greatest things that we discovered is that there is strength in waiting. When we went to the word of the Lord, and we looked at Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the Bible says he gives power to the saint and to them who have no might, no might, he increases in strength. Says the young man shall faint, the youth shall utterly fall, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So you must understand there is strength in waiting. Again, when David says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, you shall strengthen thine heart. What he needs you to understand is that God wants you to be brave in the time that you're waiting. Don't allow yourself to get weak, but be strong or be brave. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture in, I believe, Ephesians, I believe somewhere around about the sixth chapter, that in the tenth verse it says, uh, beloved brethren, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Finally, finally, after all that you've been through, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You have to understand the importance of learning how to be strong while God is saying, I need you to wait. And we talked about waiting. We, are, we talked about how there's a difference between a time of waiting and patience. When we talk about waiting when it comes to time, we're talking about a specific amount of time that you have to wait. For instance, if I tell you that this Saturday at 8 p.m., I'm coming to pick you up so we can go out to eat. Did you know be somewhere be by the 8 o'clock p.m. hour, I am supposed to be showing up because that's what I told you. But if I told you I'll be there just as soon as I can get there, then what it means is you've got to be patient and know that it's going to happen when you see me show up. Now, that the reason I went there is because where the Lord wants us to go tonight. We still want to talk about the importance of waiting, but what I want to do tonight is I want to shift a little bit, and I want to tell you to trust the process. See, because here's what you don't understand. What you don't understand is that if God wants you to wait, it's because there is a process that must take place in order for certain things to transpire. Yes, let me say it again. There is a process. There is a process that must take place in order for certain things to transpire. Okay, what are you saying, Apostle Whitlow? Here's what I'm saying. According to the word of the Lord in um, Psalm, the 40th division, the first verse, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me 
and heard my cry. Okay, so notice the process. The first thing is the psalmist says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He didn't say I just waited. He didn't say I was patient. He said I waited patiently for the Lord. I, I'm going to take this, if you will, I, I want to take this time and use my spiritual imagination and we'll say it like this. The psalmist is saying that, okay, I, I want to make sure you get that. The psalmist is saying that God is busy. Oh, somebody does not like that. But notice the, the psalmist said, I waited patiently for the Lord. In other words, what he's really saying is I had total reliance upon the Lord. That's what I did. My, so if, if I'm going to trust the process, I have to trust totally upon the Lord that he's got this, that he's going to handle whatever it is I need him to handle, So, which means I cannot rush him. I cannot force him. I cannot push him. I cannot push his arm. But I need to, I, I need to totally rely upon him. And now watch this. Here's the process. Well, this is something that the Lord showed me, and it made me say, wow. The psalmist said, I waited patiently upon, uh, for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. In other words, here's what he says. Here's what he says. He says, when you learn how to wait patiently, he says, he, the Lord will turn to you. When it's your turn, oh, my goodness, I need you to understand that some of us think we are the only ones dealing with our issues. Some of us think we're the only, some of us think we're the only ones dealing with the problems we have. We think we're the only one who has a husband who doesn't do what we would like to see done, or we have children who are disrespectful, or we have a job and a boss that doesn't do us right. You think you're the only one who has lost a loved one, or you think you're the only one who who's having financial troubles, or you think you're the only one who has car trouble or weren't concerned about a place to live or don't have nothing to eat, I need you to understand you are not the only one, not here in the USA, not in Canada, not in South America, not in Africa, not in Europe, not in Asia. Come on, I need you to understand that not in the, Ar the Arctic, the, the Antarctica, in, in no place can, must you think that you are the only one dealing with what you are dealing with. So what the psalmist is doing, he's getting a revelation, and his revelation is that when it God will turn to you when it's your turn. My God, I wish somebody would get that in their system. When it is your turn, God's going to turn to you. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And so when you begin to understand this, then you ought to become brave and say to yourself, I'm next. Why? Because God's going to turn to me real soon. I don't know if I'm first in line, if I'm last in line, or if I'm somewhere in the middle of the line. But I do know this, that according to what God says, he says the first shall be last, the last shall be first. So God can shift the line any way he wants to because he's not governed by a particular way of doing things because he is God. So understand this. God will turn to you when it's your turn. And guess what? When God turns to you, here's the second thing. When God turns to you, please understand that God will hear your cry. It's when God turns to you. So you sitting there whining like a baby. Well, I don't understand why I'm going through this, and I don't understand why it's taking God so long, and what did I do wrong when I treat people right, and I pay my tithes, and I pray every night, and you're doing all of this and all of that. You're not being strong. What you're doing is you're being a crybaby. You're being a whiner. You're being a coward. You gotta, let me tell you something. The Bible says that you must endure hardness as a good soldier. In other words, you can't sit there and be discouraged because you're dealing with some stuff. You're supposed to deal with some stuff. How do I know? Because Job 14 and 1 says that man that is born of a woman is of a few days and they are full of trouble. So you are supposed to have some hardship in your life. You're supposed to have some complications. You're supposed to have some struggles in your life. But you have it because God wants you to understand that he has a way of working things. Even when it don't look like it. But if you don't learn how to trust the process, 
Oh, we want everything instant. We want everything right away. We want to we wanna go through something, and we want to cry for 32 seconds and then expect God to move for the next eight years. It does not work that way. You need to understand something. You need to understand that God has a set time to deal with you and your scenario. And I'll be honest with you. He heard you the first time you prayed, but that doesn't mean that it's time for him to move at that point. This is what I need you to understand. He will hear your cry. Yes, he will. He's going to give you the opportunity to let it all out. But what you should be doing in the meantime is just waiting patiently with total reliance upon the Lord. The Bible says in in, in, in Proverbs 3, uh, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. You've got to know that God knows what he's doing. Let me pause right here to say to those who are just tuning in, welcome to the pastor's corner. We are here tonight, amen, and we are continuing with this series or this this word that we the Lord gave us last week, which is entitled The Importance of Waiting, and tonight we're talking about trust the process. You've got to learn how to trust the process. And when we talk about the process, you must, you must understand that the process really means to make greater. The process means to make greater. So I need you to understand that the reason you trust the process is because you trust what God is making greater. You trust what God is making better. You trust what God is getting ready to expand or what God is getting ready to extend or what God is getting ready to um, magnify, if you will. See, so you you can't sit there and have this pity party. You can't sit there and do all this whining and crying and, and wondering what you did and everything. I mean, some things have nothing to do with what you did, but with, it has everything to do with what God wants to do. I need you to get this. So you must understand that he will hear your cry when he turns to you because it's your turn. So in the meantime, you got to just rely on him. you got to know that God already knows what you're dealing with. As a matter of fact, we said last week in Hebrews uh, 10 and 36 that you have need of patience. After that, you have done the will of God that you might obtain the promise. See, you need to understand the reason that you can't get the thing that God wants you to have because you have not learned how to be patient. Oh, how we just want to rush through things. Wouldn't it be nice if we could twinkle our nose like uh, Samantha from Bewitched, and then all of a sudden, you know, every all of our troubles would be over. Wouldn't that be beautiful if we could do like Jeannie from I Dream of Jeannie, if we could put our um our um arms together and blink, and then everything be better just the way we want it? But it does not work like that. God does not do magic. No, he's not. He doesn't do gimmicks. He doesn't do magic. He gives us practical, realistic things that we can do. And one of the things that he wants us to understand is how to wait patiently. Wait patiently. Don't faint. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. No, that's not what you do. You got to learn how to be of good courage. You got to learn that if you're waiting, God is going to strengthen you while you're waiting until it's your time. That's why God will often send a prophet your way. Why? Because a prophet comes to um, to edify. That's build up. Uh huh. Yeah. To exhort. That is to strengthen and to comfort. To make you feel better. I need you to understand that. God doesn't send someone to tear you down and break you down. No, that's not what God is about. God is about building you up, strengthening you, and getting you ready for what is to come. So therefore, he sends a prophet into your life. Okay, so therefore, you need to understand that God just needs you to receive strength while you're waiting. I know that you want this to be over with. I know that you want to get past this. You want to get through this. You don't want to deal with this no more. But you must understand that God has a set way of doing what he wants to do because he's God. And the Bible says that he knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Well, the Bible says, call on the Lord and he will answer and show thee great and mighty things which I know is not. That's absolutely the truth. He will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. It didn't say when he's going to do it. It just said he's going to do it. So what you got to learn how to do is be patient. 
and wait on. I'm trying to help somebody because I don't want anyone to miss this tonight because I can understand what you're feeling. I can understand what you're dealing with. I can understand the loss. I can understand the hurt. I can understand the pain. I can understand the setback and the disappointment and all the other stuff you could come up with. It does not change the reality that you have to learn how to wait patiently on the Lord. It doesn't matter if you pay more money in the church than someone else. That doesn't mean that God is going to hurry up on your account. It don't make a difference that you pray five times a day and the person or, and there's someone else who prays one time a day. God is God and he is not governed by what you choose to do. I need you to understand that God is not into legalism. So you cannot earn God um, his hand in your life. You cannot earn the hand of God. What you need to do is learn how to wait for the hand of God. You got to understand that when God is for you, he's for you. That don't mean he's going to do it right when you think he should. He's God. He's not governed by you. He's not governed by your circumstance. So it don't make a difference if you decide that you ain't going to eat for two and three days. You're not hurting God because guaranteed, I guarantee you, God ain't hungry. So he ain't worried. He ain't worried about eating. You don't want to eat because you think God is ignoring you. That's on you. But now when you find yourself in a situation where you got to go to the doctor because you don't created some ulcer or you don't created some kidney stone or something else in your system, don't get mad at God. You get mad at yourself. Nobody told you to act that way. Nobody told you to get all stressed out. When he says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. God wants you to understand the importance of how to wait. You need to learn the importance of waiting. So watch this. He goes on and he says this. He says, you must understand that you learn to wait patiently on the Lord, right? And that that is total reliance. You got to know that he'll turn to you when it's your turn, and then he will hear your cry. Here's the other thing that you need to understand, that God will bring you up and out. In other words, when you, if you're down, God's got to bring you up. Whatever you're in, God's got to bring you out. I need you to understand this. When he comes to see about you and you don't cry at all that you can cry, know that he's going to bring you up and he's going to bring you up. Out. I know that people have walked all over you while you've been talking about you waiting for your God, and it seemed like God wasn't doing anything. It seemed like people were getting the best over you and kicking dust on you and all of this and that. Please hear me when I say God is going to bring you up and out. When God turns to you because it's your turn, he's going to bring you up and he's going to bring you out, but he will not go do it until you learn how to wait, how to be patient, how to trust and rely upon him and him alone, not some psychic reader, not some tarot card reader, not your boyfriend, not your girlfriend, not your husband, not your children, not the pastor or the deacon or somebody. You've got to learn how to wait on God. Yes, thank God for me. Thank God for some of the people that are in our life. Some of the people don't, that's in our life don't need to be in our life because what they do is they try to get us to turn away from God. I think about Job's wife when she told Job, said, why don't you just curse God and die? And he said, you better get away from me, sir. Woman, you talking like somebody I don't even know. Uh, so you got to be careful when you're going through what you're going through, who you even share what you're dealing with. You can't be transparent with everybody. You can't be open with everybody. You need to be very mindful. That's why when you're waiting, sometimes you better learn how to isolate yourself and get along with God. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got to learn how to get along with God. And when you get along with God, don't just get there and, and murmur and complain, but get there and just lay in his presence, just bask in his presence, just start loving on him in his presence. These are the things that make a difference. Listen, Kimmy Kim, if there's someone who calls in, please, you need to let me know because I don't want to do all the talking if somebody wants to come in and share something. Matter of fact, why don't you share the number with them real quick? Come on, share the number with them real quick in case they want to call in to the pastor's corner and they want to talk about this with me. Uh, go on, Kimmy Kim. Tell them, tell them. She's done left me again. Lord Jesus, I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyway, listen, here's what I'm trying to get you to understand, that God will bring you up, and he will bring you out when it's time for him to come and see about you. Tell him again. The number to call in is 646-564-9842. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Finally, I got you here. Good God. All right. So listen, it's important. It's important to wait. It is important to wait. It is important to wait. Not rush, but wait. Not be in a hurry, but wait. God knows what he is doing. We talked about this even last week in James, the first chapter, second verse. It says, my beloved brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. I need you to understand something, that when you go to God, God says this. He says, I need to work on your faith, and I need to develop you. I need to get you ready for what is about to come into place in your life. God says, I need to get you ready for it. That's why sometimes you don't hear God responding right away because God is saying, okay, this is what's going on. I got to get you ready for it. I got to let you go through this. I got to let you go through that. But I'm going to bring you up and out when it's your time. See, but I got to let patience have her perfect work that you may be entire, indeed, lacking or wanting nothing. God doesn't want something missing from the process. So you have to trust the process so that you don't miss something that is going to hurt you in the long run. So he says, be strong in the Lord. Uh huh. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Wait on the Lord and then be of good courage. And then God says, I'll strengthen your heart. Watch this. Watch this. God not only going to bring you up and bring you out, but when God does see about you, he's going to place your feet on a rock. In other words, he's going to give you a secure foundation so that you don't slip back into the same thing again. Watch this. Watch what the psalmist said. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Look at this. Look at this. This is what he's saying. What he was really getting at He's saying, I had gotten to the point where there were so many that was against me. He said, I was about to slip and give up. I was about to slip. I was about to quit and call this thing, call, throw in the towel and say, I had enough. Uh-uh. No, but what God says is what I'm going to do is when I come and see about you, not only am I going to bring you up and bring you out, but I'm going to make sure that you have a solid foundation for your foot. But what you got, in other words, I want to make sure you're able to stand so that you're not dangling or you're not, you know, you're not wobbly, but I want you to have a a sureness in your stand, a sureness in your stance, a sureness in your position and in your posture. That's what God said. He said, but you got to learn how to wait. You got to learn how to wait. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this. He, then not only is he going to do that, but I need you to understand that he's going to give you a reason to sing a new song. Oh, my goodness. I want to park right there. Okay, when God comes to see about you because you have learned how to wait on him, he's going to give you a reason to sing a new song. In other words, he's going to give you a reason to rejoice. He's going to give you a reason to give him praise. He's going to give you a reason to lift him up. He's going to give you a reason to magnify his name when you learn how to wait. But you got to trust the process. And the process is God is going to do it when he's good and well ready. So don't get discouraged because it didn't happen. But what you got to do is know that God got something in mind just for you. As a matter of fact, I'm now reminded of a scripture that says, be anxious for nothing, but uh, but with all with all prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to the Lord. In other words, don't stop praying. Just keep praying because the more you pray, the more you're going to be strengthened. But not just that. God says, when I come and see about you, not only will I bring you up and out, but I'm going to give you a sure foundation to stand on. And the foundation will continue to be his word. Why? Because the foundation of the Lord stands sure. Having this seal the Lord knows them that are his and let everyone that name is the name of Christ depart from iniquity according to 2 Timothy 2 and 19. So I'm trying to get you to understand that what God wants you to do is learn how to wait, learn how to be patient, learn not to be in a hurry, learn not to murmur, learn not to complain, learn not to compromise, learn not to throw in the towel, learn not to give up, but learn to be patient, learn to wait on God, learn to know that God is going to come and see a 
without you. God is your help. He is all that you need, but you can't see it if you're in a hurry and you try to pass, bypass God. Watch this. I noticed something that, oh, I want you to know something that God spoke something to me one time because I kept saying, Lord, you told me that you are a present help in trouble. He said, he said, you said to be still and know that you are God, but you said that you're a present help. You said you're my refuge, a present help in the time of trouble. I said, God, how are you a present help in time of trouble? And I can't see you. He says, you'll never see me when you're looking at the problem. You'll never see me when you're looking at what's wrong or the things that's going wrong. You can only see me when you keep your eyes on me. So when you're waiting on God, you got to keep looking to God because you find strength in looking to God. That's why the psalmist says, I will look unto the hill from which comes my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. So when I begin looking at God or looking to God, I get strength from God because I understand he is God. And because I understand he is God, I know that he will do what only he can do because he's able to do exceedingly abundant above all that I can ask or think according to the power that works in me. And so the power that works in me is strengthened when I wait on him because I trust the process. I don't believe for one moment that God's going to leave me hanging. I don't believe for one moment that God going to leave me in my circumstance. I don't believe for one moment that he's going to bring me this far to leave me. So you got to trust the process. I know it's not what you want to see right now, but you got to trust the process. It may not be what you want to hear right now, but you got to trust the process. It may not be happening the way you would like it to happen right now, but you got to trust the process. For the word of the Lord says, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. And when you understand that the greater one is the greater one, the greater one is in you, it should make it easier to face what you are facing. But so you find strength in what God says. You find strength in what God says. It don't make a difference what the devil tried to do, because the devil don't have no power to overpower you. As a matter of fact, Here's what the Lord says, even when you're waiting, he says, behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and over scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. So God wants you to understand that there's nothing the enemy can do while you're waiting that could really hurt you. Nothing. Why? Because you have power over the power of the enemy. Okay, y'all ain't going to say, y'all y'all ain't getting this. Y'all ain't understanding what the Lord is trying to get you to understand. What he wants you to understand is to be patient, trust the process, knowing that he's got everything covered. He sees everything you're dealing with. He sees your frustration. He sees your agitation. He sees your irritation. He sees all of these things. But what he wants you to do is he wants you to trust him. Don't get weak, but trust him. Don't don't give up, but trust him. You got to be patient. You got to be patient. And you got to tell yourself, self, we're going to be patient. Self, we're going to wait on the Lord. Self, we're going to believe God. Self is going to get better. Self, God going to work it out. Self, God going to turn it around. Self, God going to make it work for my good. Because the Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So why quote it if you ain't going to believe it? Why recite it if you ain't going to believe it? When God is for you, who can be against you? It don't make a difference what you're facing. Just because it didn't happen right away doesn't mean that God has abandoned you or that God has left you hanging. What God wants you to do is take him at his word. What God wants you to do is be patient. What God wants you to do is wait, not be in a hurry, not try to go ahead of him, but wait on him. This needs to be the thing that is echoing in your spirit. God is trusting you to trust him. Let me say that again. This is what needs to echo in your spirit. God is trusting you to trust him. So therefore, it's important that you learn how to wait on the Lord. It's important that you understand that if, it, if you don't wait, you won't see anything happen. See, I need you to understand Certain things don't work if you cannot wait. Certain things cannot work if you cannot wait. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is you got to be patient. 
and let God do what he's doing. You got to let God be God. Stop trying to take his place. Stop trying to do what he does. God's got you, but he'll strengthen you if you learn how to wait. He will strengthen your heart. He knows what you can endure. So he'll strengthen your heart if you learn how to wait. But you got to learn how to wait. You got to learn how to be patient. You got to tell you got to tap yourself and say, "We're going to get through this, but we're going to wait. This ain't going to consume us and overwhelm us cuz we're going to wait." But God wants you to wait. Not be in a hurry. God wants you to wait. Not be not panic. But he wants you to wait. He doesn't want you to throw in the towel. But he wants you to wait. Why? Because he's still God. And he's going to see about you when it's your turn. When it's your turn, he's going to turn to you. When it's your turn. So he's dealing with someone else right now. Because believe it or not, there is someone else's situation that's a whole lot worse than yours. You think yours is bad. But go to some of these third world countries where people have no food. So they're killing one another to eat. They have no clothes, so they're killing one another to get what they've got. You think you've got it bad. There's someone who's got it a whole lot worse than you. Someone just lost a loved one. But there's someone who was born with nobody there for them. They're an orphan. Somebody got it worse than you. So certainly you can wait. Certainly you can wait. Don't let the enemy talk to your mind and tell you that the Lord ain't going to come through for you. Don't let the enemy deceive you into thinking that you're going to have to commit suicide. Don't let the enemy convince you that you're going to have to walk away from the promise of God. The Bible says that the thief come not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And the way you're going to get that abundant life is learning how to wait on the Lord. God's going to come through for you. He's going to see about you. He's going to help you. He's going to uphold you. He's going to raise you up in the midst of what you're facing. He's going to do it. But you got to be willing. You got to be willing to wait patiently. Look at this. I need you to understand something. Uh, the Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Notice, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of my clay. He set my feet upon a rock and established my glowings, my goings. And then it says, he put a new song in my mouth, even praising to our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Let me tell you something. One of the biggest reasons God wants you to learn how to wait is because somebody needs your example. Somebody needs you to be the model. Somebody needs you to show them how to do it. That's why people are keeping their eye on you. Not everybody trying to find something on you to talk about you. People, some people are looking at you to know how to do it, how to get past what they're facing, how to literally wait on God. So how are you going to talk about this great God you have, but you won't wait on him? How are you going to talk about how God loves you, but you can't wait on him? I mean, think about it. Think about it. When your mate is at work and tells you they'll be home shortly, you wait for them to get home. Even if they're delayed, you still wait for them to get home. Even if you're hungry, you still wait for them to get home. Because, you know, when they get home, they're going to take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. I want you to, I want you to know when God comes to see about you, he's going to take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. Okay, I need you to hear that again. When God comes and sees about you, he's going to take care of everything. That needs to be taken care of. But you have to learn how to trust the process. You got to learn how to trust the process, the process to become the overcomer. You got to trust the process, the process to become wealthy. You got to trust the process, the process to be healthy. You got to trust the process, whatever it is. You got to trust the process. You don't meet a woman uh, today and marry her tomorrow. No, you trust the process that you met the right person in the first place. And you go through the different stages. You got to trust the process. Don't abort the process. Don't abandon the process. But trust the process. Trust what God is doing. Rely totally upon God. For in Him is your help. If you don't, you're going to destroy yourself. 
If you don't, the devil going to get the best of you because he's going to know that's when you're your weakest, when you can't wait on God. No, God wants you to wait on him because he's going to do something great. But there's something else I want you to see. Watch this. If the Bible says that others shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. In other words, what God is saying, the reason I want you to learn how to wait on me and be patient because I want you to show others how to do it so that they will turn to me. And then when they have a scenario, they will already know what to expect. You know, when you go work at a place that you've never worked at before, they train you. And when they train you, it's so that when you get it, that when somebody else comes along, you can train them. Why does that? Why does, why does God want you to do that? Because he wants you to be able to show others that it can be done. He wants you to show others that they can make it. He wants you to show others that they're going to get past what they're facing. He wants you to show others that it's not as bad as it seems. He wants you to show others how to wait. So what you got to do, you got to say, Lord, teach me how to wait so I can teach someone else how to wait. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. You got to tell the Lord, teach me how to wait so I can teach someone else how to wait. I don't want to be in a hurry, God. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss what you're trying to show me. I don't, miss, I don't want to miss what you want to do in my life. So teach me how to wait so I can show others how to wait, so I can show others how to be patient. And then when you pray these prayers, you got to be willing to uh, uh, go along with the prayer that you prayed and operate accordingly. Not be discouraged. Not, not be discouraged or not be nerve-wrecked, but trust God that God's got you, that God's going to work things out for you. Please understand what I'm saying to you. God wants you to trust the process. Tell yourself, I've got to trust the process because God knows what he's doing. We've said it time and time again. God knows the plans that he thinks towards you, plans or thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God wants you to look forward to what he's going to do. So that's why the Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace. You keep your mind stayed on him and make the Lord your trust. He'll make you strong if you trust him. He'll help you to get past what you're dealing with if you just trust him. But you got to be patient. You got to be patient. You got to wait patiently on the Lord. Don't be in a hurry. You can't hurry, God, so don't be in a hurry. Sometimes when you're in a hurry, you miss some stuff because you're trying to rush and you wind up with something that you don't want. You wind up in a predicament you don't want to be in because you couldn't be patient enough to wait. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. You are listening to the Pastor's Corner with Apostle I.A. Whitlow. Uh, of course, our host, Elder Ernest Richard, is not with us tonight. Amen. So we're praying for him. But this is what the Lord needs you to understand. The Lord needs you to understand the importance of waiting. It's important that you wait. And in your waiting, you've got to trust the process. <laughs> trust that God is going to do just what he said. Trust the process. Trust that he's going to show himself mighty and strong. Trust the process. It may take some time, but trust the process. For there is no failure in God. There is no failure. Somebody needs to see it done. Others will come to serve the Lord when you learn how to trust the process. Believe what I'm saying. Believe what I'm saying. Look at this now. I need you to understand. I need you to understand that as you trust the process, you're going to find out how great God is, and you'll be able to preach righteousness in the congregation, and you won't refrain your lips. You'll tell everybody, hey, God is a way maker because I waited for him, and he made a way for me. You won't hide uh, his righteousness within your heart, but you declare his faithfulness and his salvation. You won't conceal his loving kindness and his truth from the great congregation. In other words, you're going to tell everybody, hey, he came through for me. He came through for me. He came through for me. Oh, I feel that right there in my pinky toe. He came through for me. I thought it was over, but he came through for me. I didn't think it was going to happen, but he came through for me. I didn't know how that bill was going to get paid, but he came through for me. I thought they were going to repossess my car, but he came through for me. I thought I was going to get a divorce, but he came through for me. I thought my child was going to die, but he came through for me. I'm trying to help somebody. I thought the ministry was going to close down, but he came through for me. Why? Because I waited patiently. 
So therefore, you'll be able to talk about how he's a way maker, how he's a deliverer, how he does the supernatural, how he makes ways out of no ways. But he'll strengthen your heart when you learn how to wait. He'll strengthen your heart. But you've got to learn how to be patient. And watch this. I need you to understand that you can do it, and there is a cloud of witnesses. There is a cloud of witnesses that is cheering you on, saying, you can do this. You can be patient. You can wait. You don't have to settle. You don't have to settle. You don't have to compromise because you can wait. I need you to hear this tonight. You can wait. It may seem, it may seem like you can't, but I'm telling you, you can You can wait for things to come together. You can wait for the hand of God. You can wait for his you can wait for his manifestation. You can wait. Don't be in a hurry. Just hold on. Let God do it. I want you to know help is on the way, but you gotta be patient. Help is on the way, but you gotta be patient. Help is on the way, but you gotta be patient. Help is on the way, but you gotta be patient. I know the enemy is upset right now, but you gotta be patient. You gotta know that God's gonna do just what he said because he's God. He's not going to disappoint you because he's God. So that's why you can't get nerve-wrecked. You can't get impatient. No, you got to be patient because God's got something in store. God's got something that he's going to do, but you got to trust him. You got to take him at his word. You got to believe him when it seems unbelievable. You got to know that God is who he says he is, and he will do just what he says he will do. Come on. I need you to get this. You got to trust the process. Trust the process. A process that does, that will not fail. A process that will not disappoint you. A process that will not let you down because he wants to give you an expected end. So you got to trust the process. You got to trust what God is up to, even when you can't see it. You got to trust what God is up to, even when you don't know the plan. The Bible says that he knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. So you got to trust the process. God is working it his way. You want God to just say, okay, it's done, it's over with, and you can just go back to happy-go-lucky living. No, you got to trust the process. And you got to be faithful to God during the process. You got to still do the things that God requires you to do. Notice, there is something that Job says. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I'm going to maintain my ways before him. Then he says, all of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. <clears throat> but he's going to maintain his ways. What ways? The ways that got him to the place where God said he's a perfect and upright man who fears God and he shuns evil. So, so Job had to learn how to wait. So you have to learn how to wait. God made a promise to Abraham, and Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God, but was strong in his faith. Being faith, he was convinced or persuaded that God, whatever God said, he was also able to do. So you got to be patient and trust the process, knowing that God is who he says he is. He will do what he says he will do. He's going to make ways when it seems like there's no way can be made. He's going to do it. He's going to do it all for the sake of his glory. But what he needs you to do, he needs you to trust him. He needs you to be patient. He needs you to be mindful that he is God. He will not lie to you. He will not deceive you. He will not let you down. But you've got to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. You've got to be brave while you're waiting for the Lord. You've got to be brave to do what God has called you to do. And he's going to strengthen your heart when he sees you being brave. He'll strengthen your heart when he sees you not changing your pattern of what he requires of you. He'll strengthen your heart when he sees that you're being patient and you're waiting on him. Because surely the Lord will come through for you. I don't know who I've been talking to tonight, but I pray that you have been listening carefully and keenly to my voice and to the spirit of the Lord that has been speaking through me. I pray that you will take heed to these words to understand the importance of of waiting and how to trust the process, knowing that God will come and see about you when it's your turn. 
He'll hear your cry. And he'll bring you up and he'll bring you out. And then he'll place your feet on a solid rock to establish your feet. And then he's going to give you a new song to sing. And then he's going to cause other people to see it so that they'll turn to him. But you got to trust the process. Maybe you didn't have a testimony before, but you're going to have one after tonight when you trust the process. Maybe God hasn't moved for you yet, but trust the process. It's not going to be the way it always is. It's not going to be this way always. You're going to see something different. You're going to see a change. You're going to see a turnaround. You're going to see a miracle. You're going to see a breakthrough, but you got to trust the process. Don't be in a hurry, but trust the process. Don't pass out. Trust the process. Trust the process. Trust the process. You're going to get past this. I know you're heartbroken. I know you're heavy. But I come to tell you, you're going to get past this. Trust the process. God's got you. As long as he got you, you won't be disappointed. Amen. This is the Pastor's Corner. I'm Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow, Jr., and I'm been so glad and elated to share with you on Elations Radio and iHeart Radio and all the other sites that we are able to be a part of uh, to share this great word with you. I pray that you've heard from the Lord and that you will allow this word to penetrate your spirit, your mind, your heart, your soul, your entire being, so that you will learn how to Wait patiently and trust the process, understanding the importance of waiting. I don't want you to miss God in that, the importance of waiting. don't want you to be impatient. don't want you to suffer from impotence and infirmity. But I want you to trust the process. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. Kimmy Kim, do you have any announcements or anything for our guests who are listening tonight? Are you there? I know you said you were having some trouble, but are you there, Kimmy Kim? Come on, join me real quick. If you can hear No, me. you doing you did a great job and uh thank you so much for that wonderful message. I loved it. But um uh, hey, it's man. all yours. Well, listen, I need you to talk to us about the Elations uh celebration, the Elations uh gathering. Talk to us about that real quick. Well, we haven't got the hotel confirmation so it'd be more to come it will be in november as soon as we get the dates uh confirmed by the uh event uh place we will have the information but uh, i'm looking for it to be um tentatively six november the 16th through the 18th and it's going to be a fabulous time but uh once we get the uh, hotel confirmation, I can't wait. The pastor's corner will be Friday. Yeah, it's gonna be a great time. Great time. Awesome, but this awesome, is about the awesome. pastor's corner, so I'm I'm just grateful for the message, and uh, I thank you so well, much <laughs> once again for that wonderful uplifting sermon. Oh, now you know good what that was no preaching. That was just telling what the Bible said. That's just telling what the Bible said. <laughs> Amen. It's like God. You know that. It's God being good as Amen. Listen. Well, here, just then do this. Talk to the people about Elations uh, Radio and Elations Magazine and what you're doing with that, and then how they can get a hold of you. All right, and then I'll come back and close it out. Well, Elation Magazine and Radio is a platform promoting the um, the Word of God to empower people to live outside their circumstances. And if you would like to reach out to us, our email is elationmagazine at gmail.com. And you can visit www.elationmagazine.com. And we have uploaded some new articles for the month of July. So, yeah, um, please feel free to reach out at elationmagazine at gmail.com. 
Amen. Amen. Well, we thank God for you, Kimmy Kim, and what you are doing for the body of Christ through Elations Magazine and Elations Radio. We thank God for, you know, how you take time to labor with us, and not just the Pastor's Corner, but all of the other broadcasts that are on Elations Radio. We really appreciate you and your diligence in the kingdom of God. You are impacting and making a difference, and I want you to know that God is going to bless you for your great service and going to give you great testimonies after great testimonies for all of your great service. You are loved, you are honored, you are appreciated, and there is not a thing you can do about it, says the apostle. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, uh, before we go, um, you might have been listening tonight, and you might have been saying, I heard all this stuff, but I'm not even saved. I don't even know the Lord as my personal Savior, and I don't even know if he will accept me or receive me. Well, I want to let you know that if you are willing to acknowledge that you are a sinner, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior, and then confess that Jesus was raised from the dead, you will be delivered from your sins, and you will be embraced the family of God. So if you are one of those people who want to know the Lord, I just want you to say this little prayer with me. Say, Lord God, you are my father, but I am a sinner, and I need your salvation. I believe in my heart that you raised God, you raised your son Jesus from the dead, and I confess that he is Lord. So now save me as I'm calling on your name. Set me free. Use me for your service. I thank you. I praise you. And I vow to live for you. In your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please know that as of this very moment, you are saved, you belong to God, and there is nothing that anyone can do about it. But what I need you to do is get into a Bible preaching, Bible teaching, Bible believing church that you can grow spiritually. And as you do that, you're going to become every bit of what God would have you to become. And it's going to make a difference in your life because you will then become an impact everywhere you go because of the life you live for God. Well, listen, this has been Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow, Jr. Uh, for the Pastor's Corner. You can find the Pastor's Corner on Facebook if you have questions, concerns, or even if you want to make donations that we may continue to keep this going. You may do so at the Pastor's Corner on Facebook. I promise you that we will be glad uh, to continue to answer your questions or your concerns and pray with you, pray for you. Amen. That's what we're about. We are here to uplift the name of Jesus. We're not trying to get rich. We want you to get rich in the spirit. We want you to get rich in the things of God. That's what it's about for us. That's what we believe in, and that's what we're going to share with you. However, it does take finances to continue to do what we do to be on the airways, to um, keep these phones going, and to keep, amen, our time going. Things of that magnitude take finances. Amen. And not to mention, you might have something coming up, you may want a special guest minister to come and speak. You know, we will make time for you if that's what you desire. Uh, all you got to do is let us know. We are on, on Facebook under the Pastor's Corner. You will find Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow or our pers- Apostle I. A. Whitlow. You will find Elder Ernest Richard, and you will find a host of other pastors and teachers and ministers of the gospel who will be glad to accommodate you because that's what we're all about. We're we just want to make sure that you are right with God as we ourselves seek to always be right with God. And we say, like Paul said, follow us as we follow Christ. It's that simple. Know that we love you. We're praying for you. Please be so kind as to join us again on Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central. Amen. And we believe that God will continue to minister to you and through you. I believe that uh, our, our host, Elder Ernest Richard, will be back Uh, to join us again that we may share with you from the word of the Lord. Listen, we're going to pray. Kimmy Kim, get the song ready. We're getting ready to sign off, but let's pray 
Father, we thank you again for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you've given to us, give to your people. We pray that it was, oh God, beneficial to their spirit, and Father, that they will take heed and that they will trust the process as they are learning to wait in the name of Jesus. Now, God, go with us uh, where we go and be with us where we be and keep us in your ever-loving care, for that is the kingdom, the, the power, and the glory, now, henceforth, and forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I all Always say, go with God, and he will, and he will go with you. From the pastor's corner, I am Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow, Jr., standing in for our host, Elder Ernest Richard, and certainly our producer, the lovely Miss Kimmy Kim. We are saying good night, and the peace and love of God go with you. In Jesus' name, until next time, good night. Oh,